take you back. Hello everybody and welcome back. If you're confused and you're wondering who you're looking at right now, yes, I chopped all my hair off and I look slightly different, but it's fine. It's hair, it will grow back. This is my Nicole Hot look, in case you were wondering. So as we grow ever closer to the premiere of Winona Earp Season 3, I thought I would give you guys a quick recap of Season 2 to get you guys ready for the premiere of Season 3. I have a lot of burning questions about the previous season and what it means for the next season, as I'm sure you do too, but before we get to those, I thought I would try my hand at not a 30 second recap, but a minute recap of Winona Earp Season 2. Whether or not this will actually end up being a minute is kind of up for debate, but I can promise that it will be a minute or less. Here goes nothing. Last season of Winona Earp started with the goo from the giant worm demon having gone into Waverly, aka Gooverly. She was Gooverly for about half a season until she passed it to Winona, Goonona. They played tennis with said demon for a while until Winona finally shot him. The gang joined Black Badge for better or worse until their supervisor's head blew up. Not fun. The gardeners were siblings, one was a Trump supporter, the other two got their faces stolen by the widows, the widows of the demon Cludy that is. He is the guy that started the Earp curse and is trying to come back to life. Winona got pregnant by either Doc or a Revenant, turns out it was a little mustache in the oven so no demon baby. Speaking of, Waverly isn't a revenant either, but she's also not an herb. Weird stuff. The widows are trying to break some seals. They did. Cludy's up from his nap. The widow's been dead. Nicole had a wife and mama's coming to town. And that's what you missed on Winona Herb season two. And there you have it, a less than comprehensive recap of Winona Herb season two. Again, that was not at all a comprehensive recap of season two. There are many, many things that I missed because so many things happened last season. So many different characters had so many different stories and there are plenty of recaps online. A lot of them are really good that you should read. Um, that'll give you a more inclusive picture of season two. But that I hope was touching on all the major points and the major points of each character. Now with that recap done, I wanna get into my burning questions from season two and questions about season three I think that we should all be thinking about. First and foremost, baby Alice, it was nice knowing you for five seconds. Like I said in my recap, Winona was pregnant for the majority of the second season. We didn't know for a while if it was Doc's baby or if it was this random Revenant guy's baby and that the heir might be Revenant. Um, it wasn't and it ended up being Doc's baby, which is great and a huge relief and I'm very happy for them. But in order to protect the new heir and her new child, Winona had to send baby Alice away on a helicopter with Perry who we met in the second season and she's going off to live with Aunt Gus, I guess? But that baby is the heir and therefore still very important, which means that people are probably still going to hunt her down, try to find her for many different reasons. We met a group of firefighters slash demon hunters that wanted to kill the baby already um, to keep her out of the hands of Balshar. It was a long story. Bottom line is I don't think they exist anymore, but that doesn't mean that other people outside of the Revenant community who can't leave the Ghost River Triangle won't try to come get her. I'm wondering how Doc and Winona are going to deal with the fact that they gave their baby away to be flown away for safekeeping and what that's gonna mean for them and their relationship going forward. Winona did say, end quote, she's never coming back, meaning the baby Alice, which automatically made me think that she's certainly coming back and we will probably see her again very soon. Second is Dolls and Nicole are unlikely bedfellows. And I'm not meaning that in a sexual way at all because that would be really weird. Bedfellows is in their scheming together, they're planning together, and what are they planning? That look that Dolls gave Nicole in the finale of last season seemed to imply that they had an understanding of sorts about the cult of Balshar and that it kind of implied that they had a plan that maybe nobody knew about but them. Somewhere off screen something happened, they had a conversation about the cult of Balshar or Nicole knows something or Doll knows, Dolls knows something that nobody else knows and they're planning something. I can't really remember how much we actually learned about Cludy as an audience, but it seems like Dolls and Nicole know something that everybody else doesn't know. I'm also hoping that this Dolls and Nicole potentially knowing something about the cult of Bolshar leads us into the ever elusive territory of Nicole's backstory. Nicole's backstory hasn't been approached in the past two seasons, and I think it's long overdue. And I think the how she got to purgatory in the first place is a story that's just begging to be explored. The third question that I have leads me to saying that, Waverly, you need to sign up for Ancestry.com, like right now. We still don't know what Waverly's lineage is or who she is besides Extraordinary. So Waverly isn't a revenant because in the finale she could cross over the town line without anything happening to her, but she also isn't an herb. 
which was proven when Nicole went behind her back to get her birth certificate, where Way Hot was on the rocks for a while. The best sex is makeup sex, we, we all remember this. So who is she, and what is her relationship to Bobo? Bobo in the finale said to Doc that he never said that she was his daughter, he said that she was kin, which still, I'm blown away by this. So in what way is Waverly kin to Bobo if Bobo is a revenant? So that means he's super old, so she has some lineage relating to Bobo that isn't the herb lineage. Bobo also promised her to Balshar, so now he's after her and way to go Bobo. Speaking of waves, the next thing I wanna talk about is the fact that she fired Peacemaker in the finale, and so she must have some herpiness in her, right? We have found loopholes before in the rules that state that only the heir can use Peacemaker, as Willa had fired it before, and to be fair, she was really the herb heir all along, because she was still alive. But it leaves me wondering how many more people can fire Peacemaker who are or are not an ERP. Waverly might not be an ERP, but she could fire Peacemaker. Was it a one-time thing because Winona basically commanded Peacemaker to go and shoot Rosita? It might have just been a one-time thing, but I am really curious as to what it all means because as we remember from the Spirit Journey episode, Winona did die and that was how Bobo was able to be resurrected. So in that, um, did her unborn child become the heir? Did Waverly somehow become the heir? the air, right, because she died and let all these um, loopholes kind of come out to play, but she came back to life so she wasn't actually dead, still truly, truly the air. There's just a lot of loopholes and a lot of questions about this. Maybe it was a one-time thing and Waverly was just able to fire Peacemaker because Winona commanded it to do so, but I kind of want to believe that it's a little bit more than that. Speaking of Waverly firing Peacemaker, what has become of that traitorous revenant who she kissed one time but was also firing at? Rosita. Rosita, why, why did you do the betrayal? Because we were all rooting for you and you just had to go and screw it up. I really want to believe that she betrayed Winona and Waverly because she was scared and confused and just wanted to be safe among all the confusion that was going on, but I'd also like to know where the hell is she? She didn't die because Waverly apparently cannot aim and she just was left with a scratch and ran downstairs at Shorty's. I really don't know where she is or how she is or if she's gonna come back, but I really hope she does and I hope she's able to make amends with Waverly and Winona and just apologize for being a complete bitch and join the team again because I really like that character and uh, I hope she comes back. Maybe she can come back as not a traitorous bitch though. Three characters I have small questions about, the first one being Doc in the fact that he's mortal now because his ring broke and uh, he's feeling it. He's feeling the burn of being mortal. So they broke his ring because it was the third seal and also the key to his immortality so now he's immortal and where does that really leave him other than that he's aging now? He can still be killed as before with means like being shot or stabbed but now he's just getting gray hairs. I don't know really what this means for him other than the fact that he looked absolutely terrified to be mortal as he was staring down that well. Speaking of the well, Bobo is down there now and he has also promised Waverly to Bolshar, the demon Cludi. Great going. I'm wondering what will happen if Bolshar is like disembodied and maybe can't get to Waverly himself. Will he come rescue Bobo from the well? I'm assuming in season three he's gonna get out of the well, even though Doc put that huge thing of wood over that, over the top of the well so he couldn't get out. But I'm, I'm thinking that Bolshar's probably gonna break him out for some reason to aid him in some crazy scheme. I'm curious if Bolshar is gonna break him out, if Bobo is gonna go after Waverly, if Bolshar does break him out and deliver her to him. What role will Bobo play in the story moving forward, I think is my biggest question. Because if you think about it, coming from being a big bad in season one to still being relevant in season three is quite an accomplishment. And I'm just wondering, you know, is he gonna be enemy, friend to Waverly? In season three, we never really know with him. He's a loose cannon. The third minor question that I have about one of the characters is dolls. And if you recall in my recap of season one, I had this very same question, but what the hell is he? We still don't know. We've learned a little bit more about Dolls in this past season, his medicine, his capabilities, but what I really wanna know is did Black Badge like grow him in a Petri dish and try to like weaponize him as a lizard who could spew fire? 
Are there more of his kind, more of his species? I just need more details, please. Finally, we get to arguably the biggest mystery heading into season three, which is that Mama Earp is alive and well, and she's coming back to purgatory. In Winona Earp, a large focus has always been placed on the Earp lineage itself, but not so much so on the woman who mothered Waverly, Winona, and Willa. All we really knew was that she was gone, and that she had been gone for a while, but now she's back, and she seems really, really savvy to the curse, the demons, the whole shebang. She also seems to know an awful lot about the cult of Balshar and Balshar himself, and I would place many bets on the fact that she's probably going to play a very large role in helping Winona defeat him in season three. Whatever happened to her? I mean, what prompted her to leave in the first place? How does she know so much about Balshar? And what is we really gonna think about the fact that Winona knew that she was just chilling somewhere close by? I guess we'll have to see. Poor Waverly always gets the shit end of the stick. Always. Those are all of my questions, I think. I'm sure I'll think of more later. But as usual, I'm thinking about the season as a whole. Last year, we knew nothing about the Widows and the Demon Cludy going into season two. And all we really knew going in was that Gooverly was gonna be a thing. And for a while, that's pretty much all we dealt with. Then Cludy got introduced and the Widows. And as it turns out, we really couldn't have predicted how the season was gonna go. Nicole had a wife, which is still just like, where did that come from? Is anyone else thinking that? Because I still am. But she's getting a divorce, so it's fine. I'm saying all this now, but they could very well introduce a whole new plot line halfway through the season that takes us somewhere completely different. And these questions might not even be relevant come halfway through the season. Maybe all the questions will be answered. Maybe there'll be another big bad besides Bolshar in season three, who knows. All I know is that my little beautiful train wreck gay Western is back and I couldn't be happier. So everybody grab your whiskey and I will see you guys for season three reactions.